Hello everybody, my name's Llama Joe and welcome to my channel. We are back at the letter part 14. Let's get this started, shall we? Uh, we've already read this part, so let's just keep on going from here. We'll watch it cut to the next scene, like I was just saying, how it was complaining how it hadn't gone next there. Frankly, I've never seen her this still. She mumbles something I don't quite catch when I carry her to the empty bed and hugs herself tighter against the mess of blankets. In spite of the fact that she appears relaxed, the small frown on her face hasn't quite disappeared. Whatever happened to her won't be leaving her any time soon. But for her sake, I hope it won't stay long with her. There are still questions left to be answered. But the late hour coupled with the sudden exhaustion made my old couch a more comfortable bed than it typically is. Okay. Uh, let's read the journal first. Hopefully it doesn't spoil anything. A frightened Isabella Santos knocked at Zachary Steele's apartment in the middle of the night. Shaken, she refused to say what happened. Zachary let her stay regardless. And honestly, I mean, it really was only a few more. I could have just read a few more lines. That so would be the next scene. But I didn't know, so I think it was a good place to stop. Anyway. Darkness immediately welcomes me as soon as my head hits my makeshift pillow. I can only wish the dreams will keep at a distance for now. For both of us. October 25th, Tuesday. Mm. Okay, I was like, I was like, I was like, for a second it sounded like someone was like humming, but it's the phone. The first few notes, while muffled, are enough to wake me. In the end, it became one of those nights when sleep passes like the blink and is plagued with vague, fuzzy thoughts. I lift a hand to rub away the drowsiness from my eyes, although it does little to re relieve the gritty, burning sensation from my eyelids. Outside, the sun is yet to peak over the horizon, but night has already given way to the cool morning light, washing everything in subtle gray hues. At this hour, the entire city remains unstirring. Ordinarily, waking up before my own alarm means abusing the snooze button twice or thrice just to catch those precious few extra minutes of sleep. But the persistent ringing makes it impossible now. <clears throat> this better be good. Groggily, I scramble for the bag, sitting at the foot of the bed. Oh, it's Ash. <laughs> the ringing still hasn't stopped, even as I fish the phone out, and Ashton's name flashes brightly on the screen while I turn it on. That is the longest phone call for ringing ever. Must be pretty urgent if he hasn't dropped the call yet. Took you long enough, Z-Man. Ashton is six. Six in the morning. <laughs> Sun hasn't even risen. Hell, my brain ain't even awake yet. <laughs> Stop calling me Z-Man. It's 20 past six, Zach. You want to talk? Oh, okay. Give me back my five extra minutes, Ash. I want my sleep. Hey, don't make fun of me. I can be a, a more a person, too, if I want to. What's this all really about? You don't usually make calls around this hour. Is the world ending today? Yes. Sorry about that. Becca rang me up a few minutes ago looking for Isabella. Said she didn't show up in her own apartment last night. We both tried calling, but her phone seems to be off. Do you have any idea where... <laughs> I should have known you two would come looking for her first thing in the morning. <laughs> Not a laughing matter, Zach. You can't really let your guard down with everything that's happened here recently. He's not, actually. You've heard about the Cooper one from the news. Everyone in the precinct has been restless ever since the incident the other day. Yeah, I get what you mean. Listen, Ash, about... about Bella. I let my voice trail off unsure of how to go about recounting last night. If I should even say anything to him. He might be a close friend, but at the end of the day, whatever's bothering her ain't mine to speak of in the first place. On the bed, Isabella remains as still as when I transferred her the night before. Sometime during her sleep, she pulls up a blanket over herself and tucked into it comfortably. Like this, it's easy to forget the horror in her eyes or how much her hands and lips trembled. Save for her firm grip on the edge of the cover, she appears nearly as normal as she would any other day. Almost. Mm -hmm. I'm not really sure how to go about this while being... Zach, what about her? Something. The worry, the concern, must have surfaced in my tone because his own shifts then. Carefully, as if he's preparing for the worst. Look, you don't have to worry about her. She's with me right now. Since last night, in fact. <laughs> ho, ho, ho. Ash is gonna get all jelly. Oh. Why didn't you just say so earlier? She kind of knocked in the middle of the night. I couldn't possibly wake you two over that. And with how things are when she arrived, I thought it'd be best if I let her rest first. 
I just wasn't expecting people would be looking for her before the rooster even crows. <laughs> you could have at least called her something. Becca's beside herself with worry when she found out. You know how much she frets about the smallest stuff. I know, I she's know. she's a good friend. I'm sorry. That was a lapse on my part. And I just didn't think, okay, you know what? Rebecca's worries ain't completely baseless. Isabella hasn't been her usual self since the movie. Maybe even before that. Yeah, definitely before that. I don't know if I should be opening my mouth about this, but... Bella didn't outright say I shouldn't, so... So something's wrong then? I'm not quite sure, to be completely honest. I couldn't get the story out of her. Really? I thought you'd learned something from me by now. That's not it. Ash, when she appeared at my doorstep last night, she was shaking, and, and when I tried to ask her about it, she just panicked. Had this frightened look on her face. I'd be surprised if this was the first time I've seen it, but it ain't. Dude, the first time, she was screaming. First time? When was this? You weren't talking about the thing in the movie house, are you? Because that was just us fooling around. Granted, I think I went overboard with the joke, but... No, it happened the day after. When she invited us to lunch, you weren't there. We were walking one second, and then the next... She's crying out. I'll be straight with you. That scared me shitless. It bothered him if the way he falls silent after is telling. But whatever his opinion is stays absent from his voice when he speaks again. He's always been good with that, hiding what he thinks. Did she say anything else? Nothing. Won't tell me anything aside from a few vague words. I didn't want to push it. I'll have to practice on my Ash voice when uh, I start playing his character. Where is she? Is she still sleeping? Right here with me, still sleeping. Should I wake her up or something? Let her know you guys are looking for her? No need. Let her rest. I'll drop by in a few. Today? Don't you have work at this time? I mean, I can drop her off home myself before meeting my client later. Who <laughs> keeps talking? So, okay. Now, I, I, they didn't click with me before, so I guess he hasn't met... Um... Like, uh, sorry, it's been a while since I played the letter, so, like, the times and the days are confusing to me. Uh, he hasn't met, uh, Hannah yet. So, I, I, I'm assuming that's what he's talking about when he's talking about his client. My he, schedule's yeah. flexible, Ash. Last time I checked, you're the one who didn't have that luxury. How on earth do you think I'm able to tag along when you need me? It's not completely out of the way. They live on the other side of the town from you, Ash. <laughs> Your definition of out of the way is a little screwed up, you know. It's because he's got the feels for her. It's fine. I have some things I need to do anyway. I'll call you back. I've got to let Becca know that Scared Cat's fine. Bye. He drops the call before I can even get a word in, and for several minutes after, I find myself simply listening as the rest of Luxborn rouses. Uh, journal? Okay. Come morning, Zachary received a phone call from Ashton, who was looking for Isabella. Zachary informed him that she stayed over and, and of the circumstances. Before ending the call, Ashton offered to pick her up. The increasing sound of passing traffic, the bustle of the nearby shops preparing for the day, and the growing clamor of the people while they go about their morning. Not the most soothing sounds to hear following a troubled night, but the routine puts me at ease nevertheless. What's comforting, what's safe, what I'm used to. Nearby, Isabella shifts but doesn't wake. Blissfully unaware as the city slowly stirs itself back to life. Was her night as restless as the one I had? Were her dreams lucid? In hushed moments like this, I envy her. Unreasonably, unreasonable, probably a little unfair to say such in light of last night. If only forgetting is as easy as breathing. A small yawn escapes me when I rise from the couch to stretch. Luckily, the short conversation with Ass has a... <laughs> <laughs> oh god okay. sorry Ash slip of the tongue short conversation with Ash not ass has effectively driven away any will to go back to bed I still have a day to get through despite the proverbial ghosts hanging around the orange bottle sitting at the edge of my table is reassuring against my palm at the instant I pick it up the sterile odor of the capsules equally so it's on meds Yet the weight they carry is something I've never gotten used to. Years ago, I'd spend minutes, heck, even hours, staring at a single pill prior to taking one. Are they antidepressants? Now it's just a routine. A way to stave off the unwanted nightly visits. I think so. 
It's the only thing I think those are, but I'd, I've never taken antidepressants, so I don't know what they look like. Although I don't think Dr. Navarro will be quite pleased if he ever finds out I'm relying on them again. Mm, no, I don't... Mm. Well, I don't know. I mean, it could be antidepressants, because I know a big thing with, like, depression and stuff like that is, like, when they put you on antidepressants, they generally want you to go through therapy as well. They don't want you to just solely rely on it, but this sounds more like him relying on it medically rather than mentally, but I don't know. I do owe him a visit regardless, especially after missing our appointments on purpose and ignoring his calls for weeks. Another side comes out, tired and weary, and then I pop the tablet into my mouth. Ooh, sorry guys. Got that yawn light going on. Oh, wow, that was really loud in my ears. The bottle on my hand hits the table with more force than necessary. As much as I trust my friends, there are some things I'd rather keep to myself. Morning, Bella. Did you sleep well? She answers the question with a long, drawn-out yawn, one reminiscent of a child. <laughs> a chuckle manages to come out of my mouth at the sight. In this manner, it's easy to mistake her for someone too young for responsibilities. Inexperienced and immature, even. Easy to forget she was thrust into the role of an adult earlier than her own dreams can afford, to overlook how surprisingly observant she can be at times. Maybe not on the same level Ash exercises for his investigations or Rebecca needs for her own work, but it's certainly enough to deftly put what she sees around her on canvas. And if the way her eyes flicker on the table and my hand says something, it is that I won't be able to avoid the questions this time. Only a little. I don't remember how I ended up on the bed, though. Ma doing. You didn't look very comfortable sleeping on the couch, all hunched up like that. It would have been enough for something temporary. Well, I'm sorry, guys. I double-clicked on accident. I, sorry. Sorry I stole your bed. Hey, it doesn't matter. Besides, what kind of gentleman would I be if I leave a lady sleeping in such uncomfortable conditions? Not in this house. My nana would give me a tough scolding if I ever did that, I'm telling you. You might be able to, like, quickly tap the pause back and forth, and then you'll get, like, the, the split-second shot of being able to, to read what the text says. That's my challenge to you guys. For me, fucking up. That's my challenge for you guys. Thanks a lot, Zach. I did it on purpose, I yeah. I barged in at a very inconvenient time last night. I, I wasn't really thinking when I did, and... Hey, hey, it's cool, Bella. I ain't mad at you. That's what friends do. You guys are welcome here anytime. Although Ashen abuses the anytime <laughs> part a lot. Yeah. I don't really mind. We might have less wiggle room if all four of us are present, considering the size of this place. But as long as no one makes anything explode, it's totally fine. <laughs> like a glass dropping on the floor. Fine or not, I still owe you one for last night's trouble, especially since you don't seem to be... A concerned expression passes over her features as she spares another... Cursory glance over the table, back to the bottle, holding every small piece of what keeps the bad memories at bay. I don't think these are antidepressants. I think there's something else. The blood blooming over Pa's heart, the horrified look on Ma's face as she watches him fall, lifeless to the ground, and every ounce of spite seeping from the stranger's smile. Uh, maybe his mother didn't die. His father definitely did, though, apparently. You don't belong here. You monkeys don't belong here. Oh, shit! That's... Oh, God, that's fucked up! Oh. It never stops, doesn't it? Well, you don't seem to be feeling well. God, that sucks. Fucking hate crime? Let me know, okay? I'll make it up to you somehow. Whew, well, maybe... God, I have no idea what those pills could be. I mean, antidepressants definitely could be a thing, but uh, to make you forget memories, I, I don't know what something like that would be. I'm not that medically inclined. Uh, damn, okay, that was a lot to take in. Uh, she makes a slight gesture with her head towards the bottle, asking a question without really asking. Sud... Sub subtlety has never been one of her greatest assets, but right now, even Ash would have been a little amazed if not at loss for words at that. She has left it up to me whether I'll give her the response she wants to hear or not. 
A little clever coming from her, if anyone asked me. Um... I mean... There's nothing I've learned, if it is depression, uh, personally, for me, knowing how that is, uh, I would say tell the truth. So, we're gonna do that. But it's never easy, ain't it? Yay, Isabella. Relationship status gone. I'm talking about my own problems, that is. It will never be. Not by a long shot. Not when I've let it stay this way for so long. Um... This is a pretty heavy episode, actually. Damn. Did not expect this at all. Uh, but I think it's a good time to stop it here. Um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Alright. Well. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, feel free to like, comment, subscribe. Tell me what you like. Tell me what you don't like. And I'll do the best I can to make it right. I'm Llama Joe. And uh, I'll catch you guys in the next episode. Later.